Welcome back Bruskis. Today we're gonna change the rear brake pads here. As you can see, this is how much brake pad I have left. Just a little bit right there. And you can see the piston that came out like all the way. And then my brake fluid level is all the way in the bottom, on the minimum. You're gonna need a size 5 Allen to loosen the brake pad pin. And then a size 10 for the caliper. And once you do that, you just slide the caliper upwards, just like this. Take out the patties. Wow, that's like almost nothing left. And now before I push the piston back in all the way to fit the new pads, I'm gonna clean the surface up a little bit because it has dirt and dust. I don't want that to go on the seal of the piston in there. And I'm gonna clean it with some brake clean here and a rag. Don't go like this because all that stuff is going to go on the wheel and um, this stuff is pretty strong. You could take off the paint and stuff or make it dull. So that's all. You just go like this. And already you can see how nice you cleaned it. Nice and shiny. Look at that. Okay, I cleaned the, the piston all around here. And now I'm going to push it backwards with my hands. If that's hard to do, you can put the old pads temporary and then use a screwdriver to pry on it. Just go nice and easy, nice and slow. Nice and easy. Okay, the piston is pushed in. But you want to make sure now, if you have too much brake fluid, you could uh, suck some out from the reservoir. It is kind of extra work to remove this plastic over here to get access to the reservoir. Um, you can bleed the brake from here to remove some excess brake fluid. But that's only if you have too much in there. As you saw, mine was on the bottom before, so now after forcing the piston in, my brake fluid is back on the top now. So in most cases you'll be fine. This is only like if your pads were low and then at some point you added brake fluid. And now when you push the piston back, all that brake fluid is gonna go upwards and it'll spill out. And here's a nice tip for the new brake pads. Because this rotor is glazed, it has mileage on it. You can take a sandpaper anywhere from 80 grit to 320. I have an 80 right here, worn out. And what you can do is sand it to remove all that glazing and allow the new brake pads to seat in with the rotor nice. Took that glazing off from the rotors. It has like scratch marks so that's gonna help the new brake pads break in with the rotor nice. Because if the rotor is glazed and really smooth that can cause uh, the brake pads to squeak or not to have that nice friction to stop well. And then all that sanding material that falls down here on the wheel. Don't go too hard because that could scratch your wheels if you like put too much pressure. So just go like you're dusting off. And the caliper if you want you can slide it off to lubricate this pin in here. But this moves really freely. I don't have to mess with that. I'm just gonna clean these surfaces. And over here on the piston, right here, on that clip, and also this clip. And also this guy, remember this guy? Clean this one up too. Alright Bruskis, this is what I have for brake pads here. Made in the USA. Centered brakes. I don't recommend the organic ones. They wear out really quick and they're kind of crappy. The only thing organic I get is food, not brake pads. <laughs> so these are good for fast street use and longest life. So that sounds like a good deal to me. And it says ultimate high friction performance brakes for super bikes. Because that's a super bike right there. This guy is not kidding. Here we go, baby. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at, look at the difference. The old pad has, like, nothing left to it. Look at the new one. Now, on a car, you would lubricate the friction surface where the brake pads slide. Such as this and this. And the pin but on a motorcycle I don't recommend that because when you wash it 
all that grease can fall on the rotor like so easy and on the tire but I do recommend to use this this brake quiet I got it from Napa this stuff works so this I'm gonna put over here where the pad sits and down here of course and also on the face of the piston so what this does it, it makes the pad stick and doesn't allow it to vibrate which what happens if it vibrates it squeaks and I did have that issue when I bought the bike brand new after a couple weeks a couple months the front brakes every time I hit the brakes it would sound like a school bus so I used that Napa stuff and um, that fixed it but don't use it here where the where the pads slide just leave this bare that's better and you just need a little bit nothing too crazy and the trick to the brake pad is you gotta hook this part first this guy here it has to go in between here so basically you go like this And then you put the caliper on. You can also loop this, but once again, this is fine. I'm not gonna mess with it, it moves really easy. If yours is like a little bit stuck, you can uh, pop this out and put some grease to it. It's time for the bolt. Push the caliper a little bit downwards. Cause those clips up here, they have spring pressure on the brake pads and it wants to push it up. So just go down a little bit like this. And then you put the pad pin. And don't make this tight yet, only until it touches. And now we're gonna make this one tight. So I got the Suzuki Bible here. So caliper mounting bolts, K8 model onwards, 70 new meters. Wow, sound like a robot there. Okay, so 17 new meters, around 150 inch pounds. And that's all, it's really light. Another torque for this rear brake caliper pad pin, 15 new meters. Okay, so that's around 130 inch pounds. That's it, really light torque. Okay, now I'm gonna pump the brakes to seat in the brake pads and squish that uh, red Napa stuff. Oh yeah, look at that. That's all guys, this is real easy to do. Um, let's go for a little spin and uh, fill out the brakes. Okay, Bruskis, I took it for a ride. I went easy with the rear brake, you know, you just go easy, don't be slamming it for the first couple miles. And then the Snappa stuff, it, it cures in 10 minutes, so you don't have to wait overnight or something weird. So just 10 minutes and you're good to go. Alright, that's it for today, and see you in the next one.